Welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jason. Hey, uh, today I'm excited to have Amby Kavanaugh with me, and we'll get into how we met, but uh, it's uh, one of those things, you know how much I love music and sound, and so when I got introduced to a thing called a sound bath that we're going to talk about and share with you what that is, you know, where it's combining sound and music in a way that we can heal ourselves, transform, relax, I was all over that. So uh, I'm excited to talk about that. But even more important, I think, probably is Ambie's story, uh, because you're going to learn a lot from the path that she has gone on of her own evolution and transformation herself. And so the fact that you're listening to this right now means that there is something in today's episode that you need to hear. So whatever you do, make sure to listen to this entire episode and then share it with your friends and family. So with that, let's go ahead and roll the it episode. You are jamming with Jason Mefford, where you hear inspiring interviews with some amazing people. Some are famous, some may seem ordinary, and they are all doing extraordinary things to positively change the world. Sometimes it's just you and me having an intimate and authentic conversation about how you can change the world around you and rewrite the story of your life by being more authentic, accepting and loving yourself more, and spreading love to others. Since really, all you need is love. And what the world needs now is love, sweet love. We discuss all aspects of self-improvement, growth, and so much more. Great content, insightful advice that's practical and helpful to anyone that listens. You're always eager to come back for more and share with your friends and family since you learn something in every episode. So sit back and enjoy the easy listening while you feel seen and heard in this informative, authentic, and entertaining podcast. Now, Let's roll that beautiful podcast footage. All right, Ambie. Well, I have been looking forward to talking with you for quite a while. <laughs> so welcome. Welcome, Thank welcome, you. welcome. Thank you for your patience with me as well, Jason. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, I guess we probably should tell people a little of the backstory and how we met and then and then kind of get into to your story, which is really the whole purpose. Um, but, you know, I've, I've, I've loved music for a long time. I'm on my own, you know, spiritual involvement and uh, am always looking for different practices and things that I can do. And so when I, I was introduced to sound baths, you know, uh, other places, but then when uh, my mother, the yoga studio that my mother-in-law goes to was offering a sound bath, I'm like, I'm totally in. We're all going, right? So we make it like a family event. And that's when I met you, right? Because you were the one actually um, doing the sound bath. So yeah, uh, lovely to have, you know, I love it when I see families coming um, like yourselves and, and other families. It's just, it's an honor. Yeah, well, and it's a, it's a great way to, you know, relax and feel rejuvenated uh you know once a month to be able to come up there and, and do that with you so it's an honor to have you on and be able to talk because again i think so, you know sometimes i just like to help introduce people to some other things that are out there that that are not currently in their awareness right and and for for a lot of people that are listening this is probably one of those things that you know some of the people are going to perk up and go hold it that sounds pretty cool i want to do something like that as well right so so maybe first off if you can just kind of explain what is a sound bath right yeah. because it it's that's a term that a lot of people probably haven't haven't heard of before so a sound bath is essentially a meditative experience where you're bathed in the sounds and vibrations of a variety of different instruments. And it's not limited to particular instruments, uh, but it tends to be healing instruments, such as 
gongs and quartz crystal bowls or alchemy gemstone bowls, chimes. And the idea is, is that through the facilitator, in, in this case myself, when I perform sound baths, playing that combination of instruments with intention and with consciousness, they facilitate a healing experience and meditative experience for all those who are participating, where literally the sounds and vibrations are you know bathe each individual and have an impact on their energy bodies and also their thoughts and also their emotions and leave them feeling refreshed restored rejuvenated and with a reset nervous system so it's a really beautiful way of sharing healing with people and helping people who aren't traditional meditators necessarily get to that place where their brain waves slow down and they can really benefit from meditation, but not in the traditional way of sort of, oh, you need to sit here and silently meditate 45 minutes, which is actually very difficult and challenging for a lot of people. Well, it is because I, I, I know for myself and other people that I've talked to, it's it's hard for a lot of people to meditate, right? Because you sit down and, you know, you'll be good for the first 15 or 20 seconds of trying to slow down your brain. And then all of a sudden these thoughts come back again, right? And it's like, you know, with the sound bath experience, so really all you have to do is just kind of lay there and relax. And it's, it's a, you know, I know the first time that I did it, I just felt like this wall of energy was just going through my body. And I, and I think, you know, for anybody that hasn't experienced it, the only kind of closest thing that I can ex kind of, you know, relate it to is like, if you go to a rock concert, mm -hmm. and you're standing near one of the speakers and you just feel the vibration going through your body, that's kind of what it feels like to me. That's that's exactly, I mean, you've just hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's that, and that's why we call it a bath, because you are being immersed in these sounds and vibrations in the same way as when, you know, someone would take a bath and they're being immersed in water and, you know, usually it's warm water, right? And maybe some essential oils or some salts and they're being immersed in all those energies that come, the properties that come from those essential oils or those salts. In the same way in a sound bath, you're being immersed in different frequencies. and Everything in our existence is a, has a vibrational quality to it. Everything is frequency. You know, I go by my so one of my, one of my mantras is sort of frequency first. So when we tend to the frequency of any being and or collectively, you know, dealing with not just individuals but the collective, that is what makes radical change and transformation take place in ourselves and in the world. So I'm a really big proponent that sound healing, which has now become extremely popular and you know commercialized in many ways, which I guess is what happens with anything that becomes popular and more mainstream. Uh, but it's a wonderful thing to see because it really can help so many people. And I highly encourage anyone who hasn't experienced it before to try it out. Yeah. Well, and it's for somebody that's not really... Um you know, used to it or, or really thought about the music. Maybe we talked about this just a little bit because I, you know, again, I love music. I'm a musician. Don't get paid for it really just amateur hack, but it's, it's, it's interesting, you know? So if, if, if you think about like the different, different music that you listen to, right. Um, that music has an impact on your emotional state. Right. Absolutely. And a lot of that is because of the notes that are used or the scale that's being used. So, you know, things like a minor scale, like an A minor, E minor are going to give you a different feeling because it's a different frequency than an A or an E would that are not in a minor scale. Right. And so exactly we, we see right. this all, all day, every day. We're all experiencing this. We just don't even realize it. Right? No, yeah. When you when yeah. you watch a movie, right? They put music in the background of movies and TV shows to, to make to you feel a certain, certain emotion. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. Or, or you know, pre-COVID, I guess I, I thought of this much more is when you would go into a store and you're in at the <laughs> mall and you go into a particular store and you know I'm very sensitive. I'm energetically extremely sensitive, and so for me, if it's really loud or really you know a certain frequency of music, I wouldn't like it and I would leave. And then there's other stores I would go into where there's such a frequency of music it would normally elicit me wanting to purchase something. So whether we realize it or not, what we listen to 
what we allow to come within our ears, within our conscious and within our consciousness and within our energy bodies has a huge impact on us for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and what's interesting, like you said, it's this, this is one of those things, the more that I started understanding this and realized how much this is being used on us, right? So, so the reason when you go into stores that they play certain kinds of music is to elicit a purchase reaction out of you yep, and, and to try to draw in the types of customers that they want, right? Mm -hmm. So this is being used on you to effectively manipulate your emotions and try to get you to, to buy products or services. <clears throat> and so it, we know that it works because businesses are using it to make money. Yeah. But when you flip it around and you start looking at it from the other angle, it's like, well, hold it. If they're using it on me to elicit certain emotions, can't I now intentionally use certain kinds of music to change to an emotional state that I want to be in? Yeah, right? you've hit the nail on the head. I mean, and that's essentially called entrainment. Entrainment is this concept in science and in nature where you take two different frequencies and the, up, the lower frequency usually will start to vibrate at the same frequency as, as the higher frequency, right? So it's just like you have these two different frequencies that come together and essentially one rises up to meet the other one. And so think of it like this, when a song comes on, and you find your, your foot tapping on the floor, you find yourself tapping along or moving your body or jiggling a little bit and having a little dance in your seat. It's because perhaps you really like that song. It brings back all these memories to you and you start to get into the flow of that song and that, that those sounds and that music that is eliciting some kind of an emotional response in you. And in that same way, if you use music and sound healing very intentionally, you can use it to elicit certain responses in your brain to entrain your brain waves to a certain frequency that in, in and in that frequency neuroplasticity can take place right it you could the process of neuroplasticity can take place to rewire and reset parts of yourself so for example in the work that i've done and in, in on my own healing journey and in the work i've done with clients as well sometimes when we've gone through and when i've gone through you know, remembering traumatic incidences and when I've done that and talked it through or worked through it or, you know, through my own self-reflection journal through it and gone through that process of self-inquiry to, to really sort of alchemize it. And I've done it listening to really gentle music or classical music or sounds of nature that has helped take some of the trauma away from the, the incident. It has helped alchemize it in a way that then I can see it a little bit more clearly and remembering it whilst listening to these sounds and vibrations that feel very soothing, feel very calm, feel very safe and regulate my nervous system allows me to be able to have a bit of emotional detachment from what I'm going through and or what I did go through and be able to sort of intellectually understand it, understand the lesson and the purpose of this experience and alchemize it in a way and, and take the good from it and leave the bad and not let it affect me for the rest of my life through my mindset. So I think that, you know, that's a really powerful and beautiful thing to do. And I, I notice it in children a lot as well, where when you need them to calm down, I have a little toddler and when I want him to calm down or when I'm allowing him to watch certain programs, there are some that I just won't let him watch because they're supposed to be for children but the energy the frequency the voltage that's coming through through the images and through the sounds and vibrations is just you know it's activating in a way that is overstimulating for a small child and doesn't necessarily lead them in the right direction whereas there's other shows I can put on where it's a bit more muted it's a bit more gentle than music and I see that he's able to engage in the story that's taking place in the cartoon and really re like connect to and resonate to it without just being sort of um, burnt out by this, mm -hmm. you know, really like rah, 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 rah kind of music. Now, of course, we have people who like heavy metal and rock and things like that. And so they might be listening thinking, gosh, but I just love that type of music. But, you know, that's great and fine. But I think what's also important to remember is that all of us are so unique in terms of the lifetimes that we've had, the places that our lineage has come from, and therefore the frequencies that activate us and serve us in, you know, on our, our 
unique evolution in this lifetime. And I, so I think that's something that I'd like to sort of include for people out there thinking, ah, oh, you know, you, you saying that my type of music's not good. No, not at all. But I'm just saying we need to be aware of how the sounds and vibrations impact us for better or for worse. Well, and because I'm one of those people, I like hard rock, heavy metal, but it's, but yeah. it's, but I listen to a lot of different things, right? And and I, mm -hmm. I started to realize too that it's, you know, what we're taking into our to through into our body through our ears, like with music, is similar with food, right? So, mm -hmm. so just because I like, you know, hard rock, heavy metal, if all I consume is hard rock, heavy metal, that would kind of be like if all I you know, chose to eat were beans, let's say, right? And so all I'm eating is beans. Well, that's probably not the best for my body. I should probably put some other things in my body as well. It doesn't mean I never eat beans, right? If I love beans, but I probably should have broccoli. I don't really yeah. like broccoli, but I do <laughs> eat broccoli from time to time, right? Or I should have you know, other, yeah, other, exactly. other things in my diet. And it's the same thing, you know, from a music perspective. And so it's a, it's the same thing. I've started to check in with myself more like, huh, why do, why do I kind of feel angry right now? Or why do I feel sad? Right. And, and, and if you start to ask yourself questions like that, or, Hey, I'm feeling really happy right now. Well, is there something maybe in the music or the the noises that are going on? Because like you said, you know, with those cartoons, like anytime oh, there's a lot of, <laughs> you know, kind of stuff going on, I just feel a little, Ugh, you know, um, and, and can I switch that up? Can I change that? Can I remove myself from it? Just like you walk out of the stores or can I choose to, you know, put on other music? I have a morning playlist that I listen to a lot of the mornings just to kind of get me pumped up and excited and ready to go for the day. And those songs are picked intentionally mm -hmm. because they put me in a certain emotional state. Yeah. I mean, that's it. And that is sound healing. And that's the other thing I think, you know, I'd love people to be aware of, which is sound baths are a beautiful way to experience sound healing and to enjoy a meditative experience and they are a unique thing that I think everyone should try once right and especially as you said you know coming in person thank goodness we're over the worst of this pandemic it seems and being able to feel the frequency and the vibration of those gongs and those bowls in person and then the chimes is a you know they're kind of just being like gently uh, swayed over your head it's it's a really beautiful healing experience I think everyone should experience it once in their lifetime but I think that we forget that our planet provides us with so much natural sound healing through the sounds of nature, mm -hmm. through the sounds of, you know, the wind whistling through the trees, birds, bird song, um, through the sounds of, you know, natural bodies of water. There's just so much beautiful sound healing to be experienced. And then through all the amazing souls who came into this lifetime to create sounds and vibrations in their own unique way to create music in their own unique way and so there's we're surrounded by it and I guess the difference with sound bars is there's just a bit more intentionality in terms of the practitioners tend to be like myself in the healing arts and you know where we're sort of and I'm an astrologer as well so where we're sort of taking certain frequencies really with intention at specific times of the month etc cetera, etc cetera, or year say, hey, I'm channeling this energy into the sound bath because I know what's going on astrologically. I know what's going on sort of for the collective on an energetic basis. And so I want to channel some of that into this group of people that I'm able to hold space for and influence and hopefully help them because as they transform and shift their vibration, that's going to have a knock-on effect on everyone that they encounter and on others around them. And that's where we create this collective change. Yeah. Well, like you said, I think that this is one of those things and one of the reasons why I wanted to bring awareness for, for, for people by talking to you is, you know, try it, try, try it once. If you don't like it, fine. Right. But, but at least you can, you know, to me, it's kind of like the difference between going to a live concert versus just listening to it. Right. I mean, I yeah. love listening to music just on my, from my phone. I do it all the time. Now I, I do some other things like there, there are certain healing frequencies and other things that I, that I will use that I'm actually imagining the frequencies in my body. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't necessarily, you know, feel it per se from the little earbuds in my head, 
but I can still imagine feeling it in an experience like I would if I was live. But yeah, like for a sound bath, you're never going to understand that that exi- that that feeling of just having the sound just like push through your body unless you experience it live, right? Yeah, exactly. It has it has absolutely um, that is that's exactly the way, right way to describe it. But you still even just listening, right? You still have benefit from it because like we said it's even though those, those frequencies still end up and, and again for people that each note has a frequency and those frequencies are usually tied to certain emotions and there's a whole science behind this right that we don't we don't need to get into right now yeah absolutely. maybe i'll talk more about that later but that's not the purpose yeah. <laughs> right now but 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 there is and so we can actually we can choose to use those to get us in the emotional state that we want to be in. Yes, ex- exactly. And, you know, there is a lot of benefit for to listening to these through recordings, but I think there's nothing like, the same way exactly as you said before, a live concert, there is nothing like a live concert. Yeah. Yeah, because you get the energy of the other people that are there. You get the vibration from the speakers and from the people in, in just kind of a different a different sense. And the thing is, you know, like you said, this is this is becoming more available now. So, you know, typically wherever people might be listening to, there's chances that somebody, you know, in their area would be doing something local um, for that as well. I'm just really lucky because you're local. <laughs> so yeah. I get to go and I get to go and hang out with you. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love seeing you guys. I really do. It's it's so nice, the little community that we have there. And um, it's just such a pleasure to do this. It doesn't feel like work. That's the other thing. You know, people often ask me, so what what are you doing when you play perform the sound bath? And what I've loved about everything about this journey of sound healing that I've been on is that it's really me playing. It's really me processing. It's really, I'm going through, you know, I happen to be the person that's guiding it, that's facilitating it or whatever. But I I say to people, I feel like the gongs, the bowls, the instruments play me, you know? It's not like I'm playing them. I feel like they're playing me. And it's this incredibly symbiotic relationship that we have with each other where they want to express a certain frequency and I get to be the one that expresses that for them because I get to you know I get to play the gong I get to strike the balls I get to play with the chimes and I I channel that and I do that but when I am playing a sound bath I am going through a healing process myself because you know I am always honest about this I'm extremely human you know I'm in this human body I'm having a very human experience and that is the beauty of this all as well that I'm doing something that's healing other people but really I'm being healed at the same time and it's just this you know this wonderful collective experience well what you what you just explained there right is I mean you know again if people think about you know even just regular musicians that you're more familiar with let's say right I mean there there's a there's a big difference you can tell a difference between people who are playing the instrument and like you said, where the instrument is kind of playing them, they're in that flow to where effectively it's almost like something divine is coming through them and their fingers are just moving on the guitar or on the piano or whatever instrument it is that they're mm-hmm. playing because something is just coming through them that's that's bigger than themselves, right? And you can, you can tell the difference as you listen to certain musicians or certain music I like to think of this, uh, you know, there's certain songs, because um, I'm, I'm just like a music trivia nerd kind of thing. And mm-hmm. any any time that it, it, it never ceases to surprise me, but some of the, the best, in, in my opinion, right, songs that have been written have actually been written very quickly, in as little as 10 or 15 minutes sometimes. Isn't that amazing? And, and I mean, it just, it, yeah. it is, it's like, it's like one of my favorite songs. One of them that's in my, my morning playlist is, um, uh, uh, here comes the sun, right? Oh, George, George Harrison an and, and, and the yeah. Beatles. Right. And that was one where, you know, George, I don't know, the Beatles were, they were mad at each other. They were arguing. It was one of those times. And he's like, screw it. I'm not going into the studio today. And he went over to Eric Clapton's house to play hooky for the day and that's the song that came out in in just a very wow. short period of time right and and you go back and you listen to that song and it's 
it's different than any of the other ones that the Beatles had up until that point. It uses, you know, some different uh, uh, chord progressions and other things like that. But that's that's an example. And there's many, many, many examples of songs like this where it's just like something comes over the musician and it's almost like you feel like there's an out of body experience. And that's kind of what you get to experience when you're when you're doing the sound baths. That's exactly right. We're just all channeling something else bigger. The divine is coming through us. Hmm. Good stuff. Well, and we could talk about that all day because I can like <laughs> I know, totally I nerd out about this and we can get into all the solfagio frequencies and the, you know, oh, yeah. the, the keys that, that, that ones are used in, which, which actually interesting because again, another one of my favorite songs is Imagine by John Lennon. Huh. And Yoko actually said, you know, on an interview that I saw recently, she's like, uh, that song coming through John and I, I think is the reason why we were together. Right. And it's like, wow. fuck, right? yeah, I mean, that's wow. That is just, oh. but that's one of those two that was actually written in 528 Hertz C scale. Mm -hmm. Very few songs are written in that scale. So it touches us in a different way when we actually hear that just because of the key frequency in which it was actually written in. So. Yep. No, absolutely. It really does. And it's, you know, there's many examples of that, but that is probably one of the most profound. Yeah. So, all right. Well, <laughs> so that's a little <laughs> bit of that, that wets everybody's whistle a little bit about, about. We're both basically sound, but sound and musical nerds. I mean, you're I know. much more educated than me on it, but yeah, I love, I love nerding out about this stuff. Yeah. So like I said, I could talk about this all day, but I think, <laughs> I think one of the most important things that I want to get to is your journey right so i mean people already listening can tell from the accent you know you weren't born in america but you're living here now i am indeed and uh you know i was really surprised too to find out uh you know that you were trained as an attorney and i know yeah. you know in the uk there's barristers and solicitors i mm -hmm. couldn't remember which one you were but solicitor <laughs> you were a solicitor okay yeah so um you know, maybe let's let's get into that and just kind of explain your journey, right? Because sure. I mean, you, you, <laughs> and and just kind of you know explain how how you came to this. Because again, yes. a lot of people that are listening, they're they're like you or me. They were trained in kind of technical, businessy kind of areas, but there a lot of people are are searching or, or realizing that there's more to life than just that and I, I think your story helps to kind of to share that with other people if other people are kind of feeling that way um that we don't you know we don't go to go to university graduate end up in the same career the whole time and then we die yeah. there's yeah. different yeah. twists there's and different turns ways. in our life yeah absolutely you know well I'll start with this by saying something that I shared online, I don't know when, but saying a sole purpose, a sole purpose is not a sole purpose, right? We think mm. of it as being this singular purpose, like, oh, what's my soul's purpose? I've got to find my soul's purpose. And it's not about that. And so when I tell the story of my story of my evolution, I, I have to go back to when I was 10 years old, my grandfather, who was 91, who was a very famous attorney in Sri Lanka, my native country, where my roots come from, my family were born. Um, and he was very ill. And we knew he was going to pass away soon, you know, he had made it to 91. That's pretty good, good innings. Um, and the night that he passed away, I had a very vivid dream, where he appeared in my room and told me that I was going to become a lawyer, like him, and that I had a very specific job to do as a lawyer. And that that was going to be part of my destiny. And I woke up in the morning and I said to my parents, I apart us dead, isn't he? And he's passed away. And they were really shocked because, you know, this was, I'm 45 now. So this was some way back where we didn't have the internet and we didn't, I was 10 years old, right? There wasn't the internet 35 <laughs> years ago and all those things. And so they were shocked. I'm like, how does she know? How does she know? It's not like I got a sort of text or anything like that. And that began my journey age 10 that I wanted to become a lawyer and I became a media and entertainment lawyer. I specialized in defamation and privacy. I worked with a number of high profile people, basically suing the newspapers and the tabloids for these people. And I had a successful career. But law, as I found as I got into it, was very much about business. It was very much about money and billing and all of those things, understandably, right? Mm -hmm. But 
I started to see that this was what was the future really for me. And I was also someone that was very um, ambitious in terms of uh, being ambitious about my autonomy and not being sort of a slave to a desk and just always kind of like, you know, a very um, someone that looked outside of myself in the sense of looking for what the next big adventure was. One of my clients at the time happened to be a now infamous Hollywood producer named Harvey Weinstein. And oh, he really? Me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, there's, we could go down other paths oh, on that one, probably. That, that's, that's the whole, We, you know, when I first met him, we did have the whole, well, he had the whole conversation of, you're not a lawyer. I can't do the accent, but I should be casting you in one of my movies. And I very quickly <laughs> cut him dead and told him, that I had no interest in becoming an actress whatsoever. I was his lawyer. I looked about 12 at the time, by the way. I don't look my age. And when I was, you know, in my 20s, I really looked like a 12 year old. Um, and I started the meeting and anyway, the rest was history. In long and short of it was, I went from the law firm to working for Miramax Films and then the Weinstein Company as Vice President of Business and Legal Affairs and UK Operations. And when I worked there, I think that even though you know, I didn't have any of those terrible experiences that other people had with Harvey. And even though, you know, I, I, I was lucky to not have anything like that, but I just knew that I was not in the right place. And I knew that even the whole Hollywood thing, I was just like, I love watching movies. I still like watching movies. I love the process of creation and creativity. I mean, I'm passionate about that, but I just felt this toxicity and I knew that I was getting paid an extraordinarily large amount of money at a young age and that very soon I would become a slave to that. And like I said, autonomy has always driven me. Freedom has always driven me as one of my values. And I basically quit. I set up my own legal consultancy. So I was no longer a practicing solicitor, but I became I had my own legal consultancy and I ended up becoming an honor legal expert at the time in the UK, in my late 20s, where they didn't want a older white male lawyer no offense mm -hmm. to any old or older white male lawyers none taken <laughs> none taken none taken jason right <laughs> um, they didn't want necessarily an older white man telling everyone about these legal matters and so there was an amazing opportunity for me to come and to talk to people and be on screen which is very funny because as you know we're doing this podcast interview by audio and i'm now you know i'm actually very introverted and um that's just it's so funny to me to think that I was ever on live television and did all of that kind of stuff and sort of reveled in it because it's the polar opposite of myself in my 40s but anyway I was doing that being relatively successful making my money still in the media and entertainment industry but on my own terms and that's when I like to say if I'm allowed to say this word that the the universe bitch slapped me that's the only way that I can put it and it happened with my father getting very, very sick. Um, my parents were older when they had me, and I'm repeating that now as a, a mother in my 40s. But he got, you know, very, very unwell. And the relationship that I was in at the time soon became very, very toxic. And my entire world fell apart. You know, my dad getting that ill, the relationship falling apart, and I had my spiritual awakening and this was at the age of 31. So it was, you know, not really young. I see 20 year olds having that awakening now, or even teenagers. And for me, it happened at 31 where I really thought I knew who I was. And I began to question everything as I knew it. At the time, one of my clients who was a model said to me, you need to come to a sound bath with me. You need to come to this healing center and experience this it's like meditation, but it's like a little bit of yogic stretching and she plays this gong and I've never experienced anything more healing in my life. And I went there and ironically, the center was called the Alchemy Center. And <laughs> which is funny because my whole brand is Alchemy with Andy and it's not really a brand. It's, it's my soul, right? It's an extension of my journey and my evolution. That's how my business was birthed. But I heard that gong for the first time in 2008 and something changed in my body. It was just as though I was having this memory of something of many, many lifetimes of, I don't even know what, but that was the beginning of the end of life as I knew it <laughs> and the beginning of this new life. And to fast forward a bit now from, from the really dramatic points of the story, I then found myself a few years later, still really not in my path. I'd started coaching so that was part of my spiritual journey. I'd started coaching a lot of my legal clients and found that they were loving that so much. So I knew I was here to help people in some kind of a way. 
And then I found myself in Los Angeles, somewhere that, you know, I'd had fun times in, but it was certainly not somewhere I planned to move to. And I was here for Oscars weekend and with a bunch of friends who were in, in the industry. And honestly, by Oscars day, I was just over it all. It was just, it was just Hollywood. It's its most extreme and I just that's how you can describe the Oscars yeah (laughs) yeah it was just you know and listen I get it it's a it's a wonderful celebration of talent and I love it for that reason and I'm not so I'm trying to sound like a sort of Grinch about it all but just the excess that I was exposed to you know my friends were in the industry and um it was just party after party and you know there's a very sleazy dark side to Hollywood that I think everyone's realized now right um and the last night I could not wait to come home basically like I even didn't go to the next big party on Oscars night which was all my friends were sort of going off till five in the morning and I left at 10 p.m went back to the hotel and actually texted my mentor at the time we used Blackberry Messenger at the time and said you know god I cannot wait to come back home this has felt like not five days away but five weeks and and it's insane and then I had this dream and in the (laughs) again these things happen to me in these weird visions dream and in the dream I was basically told the next chapter of your life is in Los Angeles personally professionally spiritually in every single way you need to move it and I woke up at five in the morning sweating and basically said to myself oh god this is like one of those life directives where I had when I was 10 and saw my grandfather in my room it's just like I'm being told what I need to do and I went back to London I arranged to I owned an apartment in London at the time I arranged to rent it out for the summer and I came to LA for three months and on a tourist visa three months in realized I was going to move, started the process of moving and basically moved in 2012. And then my life as I knew it completely crumbled in a way that I can't even explain. It was so painful. It was in my mid thirties. So it's not an easy time for your life to fall apart when you've experienced seeming great success, you know, in in the way that the old paradigm, we, 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 decide or value people and say how what determines whether they're successful oh she's a lawyer oh she's on tv oh she's got an apartment oh she's friendly with this person oh she was dating this person whatever and all of that just got obliterated disappeared got burnt down and I was extremely unwell I had a lot of autoimmune disorders and diseases and things that I had to really contend with and overcome And I started the slow process of rebuilding my life. And that is what birthed Alchemy with Ambi. And essentially every single healing modality that I use to heal myself, and I did heal myself, I healed my health, I healed my psyche, I healed soul fractures, I healed a lot of from a lot of things that happened, you know, just the conditioning and the general bumps that we get in life. I can't say that I've had a terrible life by any means, but I transformed all of that using a moda- you know, a variety of different modalities, such as astrology, sound healing, Reiki, um, mindset and growth based, you know, brain based coaching, all of these different things. And that birthed this business, which, as I said, is really an extension of my soul. It's really you know, when I try and make over the years, I've had various lessons with that as well as a conscious entrepreneur. But when I've tried to get too into the business world, things have not worked for me. When I've just been really soulful and really realizing that this business is simply an extension of my soul, things have just been flowed beautifully. And that is how my journey transformed. So it's very funny because I'll tell you just one funny story, which is one of my clients from when I was a lawyer came out here to LA and he's a, a writer, producer, director. And so we went out for a bite to eat and he said to me, Ambie, if you would have told me all those years ago when, you know, you would be at the Cannes Film Festival in this like bikini or like this like glamorous dress and, you know, so extroverted, this, that and the other, that you're now like this gong play. <laughs> <laughs> hippie who's just like oh let me go and hug a tree and talk to nature but you're so happy and you know that is the evolution and the transformation but I will tell you that there is still a lawyer in me there is still every part of my journey has served a purpose and has made me who I am and has made up the fabric of everything that I do now and so I have absolutely no regrets it's just a fascinating bizarre journey that I've gone on mm. Well, it is quite a journey, right? And <laughs> and it's, you know, like you said, I mean, people that knew you before, you know, 
what you're a gone playing hippie living in california right and um, yeah that's that's what some of us do here <laughs> yep. but uh but what's what's interesting you know again i mean your story is like so many other people's stories that i've that i've had on here in that you know there there's some triggering event you know that happens that starts kind of leading a certain portion of your life right you talked about your the dream when your grandfather died mm -hmm. and that you know being an attorney that was just you know that's what you needed to do for a while and then you know you get some other uh triggering event that happens and you start to change course and you start to change course and you start to change course right um over time and sometimes that means because I I heard you kind of say this twice that you kind of burned down your life or had it burned down in front of you two times right yeah. on your oh, on your yeah. path to getting here now maybe let's let's talk a little bit about that because I know you said you know you've come through you've healed but a lot of people when they when they hit those points in their life right you have two choices at that point you either kind of you know soldier and warrior through it and come out better on the other side because you see it as an opportunity for growth but a lot of people end up getting stuck uh at that point in their life and then just don't don't progress anymore so so maybe I know I know you know we talked a little bit about sound sound bath you mentioned some of the other kind of things that that mm. you had done but but when somebody gets to that point where it feels like their whole world just falls mm. apart mm right what are some things that they that they can do to help pull themselves out of the ditch yeah well you know I I if there's anyone listening to this that is going through that I want you to know that you can rise up again and I I know that that might seem you know glib hearing that from somebody who's at the other end of it but I I really want them to know that because not only through what I've been through, but what I've guided so many other people through and what I've seen just bad witness to, bad sacred witness to in my community and beyond is that the thing with rock bottom is there's only one way and it's up, okay? And, you know, when everything burns around you, you have a choice. You have a choice and your choice is to rebirth yourself. And sometimes people are victim to very unfortunate circumstances, to things beyond their control, to things that are cruel and tragic and so, you know, devastating, but you still have a choice. We always have a choice. As long as we have a beating heart and breath running through our bodies, we have a choice. And we have the choice to decide, I'm going to take this and I'm gonna let it move me to the next version of myself. And, you know, for me, I could have been very bitter either at 31 when all of that happened with my beloved dad and, you know, the boy ex-boyfriend or again at 35 when my life completely fell up. I could have hated myself. I could have gone into complete self-hatred. But instead, I just went, wow, OK, I went through all those emotions. Don't get me wrong. And then I started to say, OK, I do not believe that the universe is punishing me. I believe that I'm being pushed. And I believe there is something on the other side of this that is that rainbow, or is that light at the end of the tunnel. And I am, I don't know how, because also I had no resources. Like I want to explain to people, I went from being, you know, having, and an, listen, I, I, if I'd have saved better and done better things and I wouldn't have left myself without resources, but I had, I was broke. I was broke, I was sick, I had nothing. And from that place, I rebuilt. And that took a lot of inner, inner strength. It took a lot of determination. It took a lot of consistency. It took time. It took patience. But I, what I did was work on myself on a mind, body, soul basis, because I don't believe you can just fix one and that the rest that you're that you are fully integrated in order to make real change i believe it's mind body and soul and what i mean by that is our brains our minds are often controlling our lives in some kind of a way right so what we think is creates an emotional response it creates a physiological response and that creates an energetic and a vibrational response that we experience in our lives on a soul level 
I believe all of us have incarnated to experience blessings and opportunities in certain areas of our lives and challenges in other areas of our lives. And using something like the tool of astrology, not to predict your future, but to have cosmic consciousness, to co-create with the cosmos, to understand, oh, you know what? I'm being bitch slapped by the cosmos at the moment. That's what's going on here. What is this aspect asking of me? What is it? Because there's duality to everything. Nothing is, you know, a blessing can contain a big curse and a curse can contain this amazing silver lining that is a blessing. So I believe in this duality of everything. So for me on a, on a mind basis, on a body basis, because everything that my body was experiencing was a result of my psyche. It was a result of my consciousness. It was a result of decisions that I've made from the wrong mindset. I had to work on myself, mind, body, and soul. And that's what created every single, you know, everything I've guided, God, thousands of people through across, you know, decade plus in my, in, of life and of this experience and the work that I'm doing is something that I've personally gone through and used and experienced and know works. And that's how I ended up offering it to other people. So it's like, I walked through the fire. I started, you know, I got Reiki, I received Reiki healing. Then I got Reiki attuned and over the years became a Reiki master. I went to so many sound baths that I only had one lesson with a really good friend of mine who's been doing sound healing for 25 years. I had one lesson and I touched the gong maybe once with a mallet. Um, I can't explain to you how I learned sound healing. It was more of a remembrance of, something I've done in various different incarnations and then on a soul level really asking like what am I supposed to be doing you know how am I supposed to be sharing because I knew that I wanted to put light into this world I knew that I wanted to serve people but I will also admit that at one point of my journey I was definitely an unhealed empath I definitely had bad boundaries I definitely did not know how to have a healthy balance with my work and my life and I had no life as a result I went into poverty consciousness of I'm going to reject every single material thing because money is bad and I was such a bad person to spend money before and I wasted so much and so you know I've been through a lot and now I find myself at this point where you know, I am resourced. I have a healthy relationship with resources. I'm, I, um, I enjoy my life. I have good boundaries. I have this beautiful extension of my soul, this business, this brand, this alchemy with Ambi, and I get to do what I love. And I also created the family that I desire. And I feel very lucky. So, and the, the health stuff completely healed itself. And that's why I want people to know, you know, you have the ability to transform your life. You may need some helping hands on the way. You may need a little bit of guidance, but really this journey is about you and you, you know, and people, I just want people to feel empowered because I know how scary and devastating it is to be at rock bottom, but we always have a chance to start again. Well, we do. And it's, it's, you know, the one thing that I've, I've learned as I've gone through some of those same sorts of things <laughs> as you, yeah. that, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of, a lot of teachers too in nature, right? And, oh, and there, gosh, yeah. there is a duality, there is the cycles. And, you know, if it's the first time that you've experienced winter, that can be kind of scary, right? But we have to go through fall and winter before springtime comes again. Right. And so sometimes it's like, you know, we're that that oak tree, let's say. Right. And we're we're sitting there and we're like, man, the summer was great. I was getting the sun on me all the time and it's raining and I'm growing and things are wonderful. And oh, man, now things are starting to get a little colder. And what's what's wrong? My leaves are starting to turn colors and and now they're starting to drop off. And I, I don't see that anymore. And and now it's so cold in the wintertime. Right. Well, at that point, right, that's that's probably how we're kind of feeling when we go through some of these troughs in our life, but springtime is coming, right? And and we can't get that that new growth in the spring unless we drop our leaves and yeah. our sap goes down to the root system and we get stronger. And so when when things come out, then we can, you know, spring forth literally in spring. You know, or the same thing. I mean, if you've got a house and you're like, man, I'd really like to remodel my house. Well, the only way you're going to remodel your house is you're going to have to destroy some things yeah. to create some things, right? Yeah. And that's another one that that most people, 
you know, it, it's, it's, it's hard to fathom, but it's like, what do you mean I have to destroy something or <laughs> I have to leave relationships or I have to, you know, quit my high paying job, right? Because in order to create sometimes what we want to create, we sometimes have to destroy or modify some of the things that are in our life currently. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why nature, you know, we underestimate how, how much we owe to na Mother Nature and how nature is just this incredible guide to exactly, as you said, these seasons and these seasons that are reflected within us. We are nature. Nature is our nature. We are part of nature. And I think what's interesting, and this is a slight diversion, is but as I look at, and I'm sure, you know, we all notice sitting here in Southern California at the moment, it's been in the 110s, right, recently, as we look at climate change and we look at all this energy uh, that's come from human beings abusing our planet in many ways and not appreciating our planet. And we look at what is happening to nature that's taking a her out of her natural rhythm, right? Because of us. And then we look at what's going on with mass consciousness and people, we can see that there is something fundamental to be fixed within nature. Yes, the climate, but also within us. These seasons of continual summer or continual growth, like when is enough enough? You know, why is it, why is it that, the entire, and this is me really going off on a tangent, but why is it that the entire food um, food sources of the, of the world are essentially controlled by four different companies? Like it's, there is, I believe that we live in an abundant universe and I believe that we have lived in an abundant world and I believe there is more than enough for all of us. And that means all of us thriving, but we need to live in this different way. And that comes through individual change. Like if I had stayed on the path that I was on, would I have made a whole hell of a lot more money? Yes. Would I have been in accolades of, oh, she's on this and oh, she's important because she's photographed on this thing or, or been on this thing, whatever, all that kind of stuff, yes. Would I be, con would my contribution, those are very superficial things, but would my contribution to the world be as impactful in a positive way and meaningful as it is now? No, I don't think it would have been on a superficial level in an old paradigm way, yeah. But I think the success that I feel I'm experiencing now is very soulful. And that's another thing that, you know, I want to sort of spread the word to people with everything I do. I really believe we look outwards and say, well, if this party would do this and if this person would get in the government or this thing, this country would stop doing this, whatever. Yeah, it's true. But everything we're seeing is um, on some degree a reflection of mass consciousness and mass cost consciousness comes down to our individual consciousness. So the more we transform ourselves to be beacons of light, to live in the, cycl in the cyclical way, to be more soulful, to be more integrated and embodied, the more we're gonna be able to change our world. Yeah. That was a complete, I went off on a complete well, tangent. Well, no, and, and, that's, and that's the only way that the world actually does change, right? I mm -hmm. mean, again, one of my favorite, favorite quotes from Gandhi, right? Be the change that you want to see in the world, paraphrased, right? And in, in fact, we were just at this store and picked up another canvas shopping bag. And guess which one my wife picked? It's the one with that Gandhi quote on it, right? Uh, but it's, it's uh, you know, it's that point. If you want the world to be different, then you have to change yourself. And then the world around you changes. Because I think what's interesting, you know, Ambie, and like, and like what you said is, you know, especially kind of growing up in the media entertainment area, right? I mean, the Oscars and, you know, other different award ceremonies like that, they're, they're awards that are given, you know, pat, pat on the back to everybody. Now, the Oscars are very politicized too, but Mm -hmm. we'll get into that here yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah it's 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 that is the way the industry uh defines success right and so yes if you want to to have your success defined in that way then there's certain things you got to do or things that you go there right but that's that's a paradigm uh that that the world has or that the industry has right but it's not yeah. the paradigm that you have now right you gave up that paradigm for a different paradigm and yeah that's what exactly. ends up happening so much of the time when we're transforming is people might think you're crazy 
you know, like like you said, your writer, writer, producer, director, friend that's like, Amby, I can't believe you're banging on gongs, you know? <laughs> I think like yeah. the Todd Rundgren song where he's like, I just want to bang on the drums all day, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> but, you know, to him, he probably can't understand that because he's still living under that other paradigm that you chose to leave, right? And, and a lot of times people might think you're crazy for doing stuff that that doesn't fit their paradigm of the world yeah. but the paradigm of the world shifts the more of us as individuals who change our paradigm then mass consciousness starts to change as well and you you can see that especially in the last few years um, some of the stuff from a mass consciousness around the world if you're looking at trends, you can start to see what's happening and it's individuals choosing to, to move and believe that the world can follow and live by other rules and a different yep. paradigm. And the more people that do that, the world actually changes. Yeah. And, and, and I really believe we're headed in that direction, but it just really requires a level of personal accountability and integrity and embodiment that is you know can be challenging right because as as we realize when we sit in the wellness world even that has become infiltrated in many ways by that old paradigm consciousness right bigger is better more 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 sell people something that they don't really need do you know what, you know it becomes mm -hmm. it just becomes everything when when i think when things get commodified in the way that late stage capitalism has done it dilutes the purity on the intention behind the original offering and so by that I'm not saying that people you know shouldn't be resourced and receive abundance for what they're doing and shouldn't be creative and expand and try different things and do things like that but I think that there are many people operating whether they're on the path of wellness even and, and self-development from this place which keeps them hooked into these old paradigm artificial timelines and distorted realities that actually don't allow them to progress in the way that they need to. For example, when I meet people and they're in therapy for 10 years, no dissing therapy, I've tried it myself, I've done it, whatever. But at some point, you know, you have to look and say, well, are you moving forward? Or are you just living in that old story, that old narrative? Like the purpose has surely got to be to be able to be more in the present without being, you know, hung on by our past and sort of haunted by our past. And, and, you know, to then be able to slowly evolve into that next version of ourselves for the future. But I think there's, there's, I mean, that's just a whole, a whole nother long conversation, but I think, you know, <laughs> I won't get into it, but you know what I'm touching on. And that's something I wanted to share as well, just because of people in your community clearly are on the personal development route and, and, you know, that journey, I think that's a beautiful thing, but even on that, like, don't get too hooked in, you know, you don't necessarily need to do the 20 million courses or work with the person for X amount of years to transform yourself. Like all these other people that you're going to are just reflecting back to you and their guides in some kind of a way, but you are the healer, you are the teacher. And yeah, sometimes we need, you know, I've had many great teachers on my journey and I've served as a teacher to many people, but I always try and remind them that, they're doing the work, you know, and that they are they, to be empowered. I think a lot of this as well is about sovereignty and empowering people to know that they can be the change that they want and that they can make the changes that they want in their lives. Yeah. And like you said, we could end up going down a whole nother rabbit hole in this. So we'll <laughs> we might have to have you back because yes, a, a couple of the things that. that you just brought up here, it's like, man, I want to get into that, but we can't have three hour podcasts. like. No, Joe and I have um, so enjoyed this conversation. I, I want to say that too. I haven't done an interview for a very long time on purpose. And when you reached out, I was just like, I want to speak to him. <laughs> yeah, and now well, I know why, because I'm enjoying this. So I much. wanted to talk to you. And I think, I think again, you know, we'll talk, but I, 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 yeah, I would love to have you back because some of these other topics that we just brought up here, um, I'd love to go down um, more, but, but yeah, that last point that, that you brought up too, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's lots of resources out there. If you're asking for people's help, look at the intention right yeah. behind, behind what the mm -hmm. person is doing, because there are some people even in the healing space that are just about the money. They just want to sell you something. They don't really care. There's other people who really their intention is to really help and love and, 
you know, support you. And, you know, I prefer to give my money to people that I feel like have good intentions Same. Um, and, and, and try to, you know, get away from people that just feel like it's a money grab. But, but that other point that you brought about, you know, that it, ultimately it's, it's all about us. And that's why, you know, we're the ones who actually have to do the work. You know, one of my mentors, you know, kind of what I tell people too, is it's like, I can, I can show you how to do some of this stuff. I can give you practices. I can, you know, explain how to do some of these things, but if you don't go and do your push-ups every day, you're not going to get the benefit of it. Right. And so, you know, it is, but the nice thing is it doesn't take a lot of time either. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not like you have to, you know, quit your job, go become a monk somewhere, but there's little things that you can do, um, every day that'll help you, you know, have that healing and, uh, and just feel better. And like you exactly. said, you, you've done it. I've done it. So it works, folks. It you works. just got to do it the works. work. <laughs> Don't worry, everyone. We, we can sort of testify. It definitely works. It does. It does. Well, Amby, thank you for coming on. Um, I know, you know, where has, where's the best place for people to reach out to you? Because I know you've you've got some different things that are going on and some stuff that's going to be coming up in the future too. So how's how's the best way for people to reach you? Yes, um, honestly, my website, um, www.alchemywithambi.com or you can email ask at alchemywithambi.com. That's just the best way to get hold of me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm guaranteed to receive that or somebody on my team is and that's how I like put, most prefer to kind of get inquiries or speak to people or for them to reach out not social media <laughs> yeah yeah i i hear you on that so well any any final thoughts that you want to leave uh to uh, before we end up wrapping today change is the only constant so embrace it <laughs> well said well said and when that change comes even if it burns your life down don't worry about it it's just the fall or winter and spring will come and so spring, will summer and so <laughs> will summer <laughs> well Amby, thank you i really appreciate you and uh yeah we'll have to be talking because i think we probably need to have you back to get into some of these other things a little bit more and that's a wrap thanks for listening the fact that you listened to this entire episode means you got value and others will too. Do me a favor and leave a five-star review with comments and then share with others. You can also check out all of my videos on my YouTube channel and my website, jasonmefford.com. This podcast is primarily for education and commentary and does not represent professional advice. Views and opinions expressed on this show are that of the individuals and not of their respective organizations.